We're back with the Forgotten City, the city where everyone is afraid of sinning. We found a man last time who was ready to sin, and that sin was murder. He attempted to murder us, and then he got turned to gold. I ran away and then uh, jumped off a cliff. Look, it seemed like a good idea at the time. It was not because we died. Okay, so remember... If we get to the White Hallway, I have to give you a spoiler warning. We didn't find the White Hallway last time, but if we do, remind me to tell you that there's a spoiler warning. We gotta continue, as I say. Where, do, where are we starting, do you think? Where would it put us? What was the checkpoint? Oh, that's her. You have to do something. She's not dead yet. A man arrived in the baths. Real nasty sort, with his face all covered up. And he's got a weapon. You have to do something, or he's gonna break the golden rule. Core blimey. I, I have... I, this is my Roman accent. Um... Any idea who's threatening Virgil? Are you serious? This is an emergency. Are you going to help or not? But how? I don't have a weapon. None of us do. The magistrate made us throw them all into the chasm. So now this man's bow is the only one in the city. You just have to improvise. Improvising didn't go so well last time. Tell me, how is this my problem? Are you daft or just callous? If you don't stop him, we're all going to die. But, I mean, why me? There are guards here. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. He's still in there, somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. Uh, maybe you shouldn't go into that shrine. What? We don't have time for this. I have to go. Never mind. I don't know why I said that. Ugh. Well, couldn't stop her from going in there. I mean, technically, though, this is the first run. We haven't... It's collapsing. We have not done the time loop yet, because we died. Here, the, here comes this guy. Oh, no! Fabia, no! I don't worry. Oh, God. She's dead. Did anyone see that? The whole train just collapsed on her. Now don't worry. Oh, she, everyone's going to turn to gold in a few minutes anyway. Oh, sweet girl. You know, technically, if I don't approach this direction, that guy's not going to appear. But, I mean, we probably should do it and do the time loop to see what happens. Stop right there. I am looking for Tiberius Quinctius Crispus, otherwise known as Quinctius. Do you know where he is? I don't know a Quintius. I'm not sure I believe that, so allow me to explain something to you. I am here with orders from Emperor Nero himself to find and execute the cultist Quinctius for terrible crimes against the Empire. So, if you tell me the truth, I will allow you to live. But if you lie to me, or otherwise obstruct the Emperor's business in any way, I will put this arrow through your chest. Is that understood? Got it. Thank you. Now tell me, who are you people, and what is this place? Why don't you put that bow down, and you can come in and see for yourself. Oh, how very welcoming of you. You want me to let my guard down, is that it? You're not going to get your claws into me. I was told Quinctius was a cultist, but I never thought he'd be foolish enough to lead me right to the heart of his mystery cult. Wait, what is a mystery cult? Oh, don't play coy with me. I don't care if you're worshipping Bacchus, Magnamata, or Christ. You lot are all the same to me. 
always sneaking off to your secret sanctuaries, indoctrinating each other with your little mantras. The Emperor may have tolerated your activities up until now, but after what Quinctius did, those days are numbered. But you've got the wrong idea! You say that, but if you're not a cult, then why go to such great lengths to keep this place a secret? I'm still looking for a way out. I don't know about anyone else. So you admit you're not allowed to leave. We can leave if we want to. We can leave your friends behind. You're a terrible liar. So none of you are allowed to leave. Fascinating. That sounds an awful lot like a cult to me. And I saw the inscription saying, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. I take it this is some kind of mantra you all believe? No. Another lie. So you really do believe that? Yes. Are you seeing the word lie next to my options? How are you? How do you know that I'm lying? Now tell me, where did you lot get enough gold to make all these statues? They were once people. They were turned to gold as punishment. You lot are practicing human sacrifice too. You people disgust me. You're distorting what I said. Yes, yes, because I'm the real villain here. It's all clear to me now. The secret sanctuary, the indoctrination, the mantra, the human sacrifice. You're cultists. There's no doubt in my mind. What baffles me is how a person can believe in something with such zeal. They just can't see what they've become. However, you still have a chance to redeem yourself by telling me where Quintius is. Do not waste it. What's it going to take for you to let this go? Gold? Take all the gold you want. Gold? <laughs> I don't care about gold. You don't seem to understand the situation. So let me make it abundantly clear. The only thing I care about is carrying out my duty to execute the cultist Quinctius. I have spent many exhausting months tracking this arsonist through cities and villages, roads and forests, bribing stubborn travelers and peasants for leads. At times, I was so bone tired I could have sworn I'd approached the brink of death. But still, day and night, I pressed on for the glory of the Emperor. So, you see, I know he's here. Turning back is not an option. And right now, the only thing standing between me and my triumphant return to Rome is you. So, for the last time, are you going to tell me where he is? Or do I have to put an arrow in you and ask the next person I meet? I have no idea who or where he is. <sighs> Then you're of no use to me. Do you have any last words? Jesus Christ, you're an idiot. Aha, I knew it. Now it's my turn to tell you something. Once I'm done with you and Quintius, I intend to kill every last one of you wretched degenerates. And I can think of nothing I'd enjoy more. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Yep, we got golded. All right, and we gotta go. All right, so this time we're gonna see if we can get the Sentius.
Do you have any news about your investigation? You know a way out of here? If I did, I'd have led these people out of here already. What's your story? Sextus Sentius Imperiosus is my name. Though magistrate is the proper way to address me. Before I wound up here, I was a decurion in the cavalry of Imperial Rome, helping protect civilization from the barbarians. What's a decurion? It's a cavalry officer. I had 30 men under my command. This was my uniform. Why are you still wearing it? As magistrate, I usually wear a toga, but today I may need to survive long enough to create the portal for you, so it seemed prudent. How did you end up here? My men and I were at the Emporium in Rome as honor guard for a visiting dignitary arriving upriver by barge. Now the port is usually bustling, but just as our guests arrived, waves of people began running toward the river from streets and alleyways in every direction. They were trying to escape a terrible fire. Unfortunately, the crowd sent my horse into a panic and, I remember it, losing its footing by the water's edge. The next thing I knew, I was waking up on a riverbank not far from here in the company of some stranger. I went looking for my horse and discovered that lonely temple. You can probably figure out the rest. How did you come to be magistrate? I was elected seven months ago, uncontested because of my command experience. Since then, there's been growing agitation for another election. They're supposed to be annual, but I agreed to hold it sooner, hoping it would placate my constituents. Unfortunately, it just seems to have emboldened certain elements instead. Let's talk about something else. About who's going to break the golden rule. I know who it is. Yes. It's, um... Why do you say that? Uh, he's price gouging over life-saving medicine. That's got to be a sin. Indeed. That is abhorrent and even if doing so hasn't directly broken the golden rule it's not difficult to imagine this behavior provoking someone to theft or violence thank you for bringing this to my attention but before we proceed i must ask are you sure he's the one oh absolutely well then in that case as much as it pains me to do so I must act decisively to ensure the survival of my people. As magistrate, I hereby declare him an enemy of Rome and authorize his execution by your hand. Forthwith. Oh, am I the executioner? Won't that break the golden rule? I don't believe so, no. It's not a crime to carry out the lawful order of a magistrate. Hmm, but we're not talking about crimes, we're talking about sins. Don't you need to give him a trial first or some such? So now you're an expert on Roman law, are you? Listen to me. We are cut off from the Empire down here, fending for ourselves on the brink of annihilation. If ever there was a time to dispense with legal procedure, it would be now. Think of it as an act of preemptive self-defense. Think of the lives you'll be saving. Mm, preemptive self-defense, it does sound pretty sweet. I think I need to kill some people to defend myself. In... just in case. That sounds alright. Fair enough. How am I going to execute him? Any way you can. Despite my weapons ban, it's been my experience one can always find a weapon if one looks hard enough. Hmm... I... all right. Thank you. Please act quickly before it's too late. I got... I have to find a way to kill that man. Uh, here's mm, some hot... Uh, no, that's probably not going to work as a weapon. Hey, I need to borrow your helmet. Uh, I'm going to need to to smash a man's skull in, and your helmet seems like it could probably do that. Oh, Sinculio Mio. 
Uh, he, he's not. He's not doing it. He's not talking. There's Sewer Man. You know, we ran away from Sewer Man last time. Maybe we should have a talk with him. Like, maybe I got him all wrong. <laughs> hey, Sewer Man. Oh, you're a statue. You're a statue made of gold. I can kick you. Kick you, give you kicks. Uh. Uh. Give him some kicks. Please. Uh. You got a weapon down here? Help me. I'm looking for a weapon. I don't have a weapon. Oh, you don't have, like, a face. Your face is gone. It's just, like, completely not there. What is this? It's another... Well, it looks like him. But it's, not, like, not moving around or anything. I don't think I can get around you, sir. I can keep kicking you. Oh, there's a quiver right there. Oh, I mean, there's a quiver, but not a bow. Do you have a bow anywhere? Well, I think we're st I think we're stuck down here together. I'm gonna blind you with my flashlight. Do you like just back up a little? Just back up a little bit. Just back it up. Back that thing up. You are not backing it up, sir. Now you kind of have a face. It's like, yeah, I guess it's sort of like a skull. Can I just like wiggle by you? Just like the wig wiggle by you a little bit. I can't wiggle by you. I feel like being if you're going to be in tight quarters with someone like this, you need to have the ability to just wiggle a little bit. Give him a jump kick. Jump kick doesn't seem to change anything. Just want to get around you, sir? Well, I did find... Okay, so... We did find... Uh, before we, we die from endless combat... Against this, this man... Uh, we did find a quiver of arrows down here. We found some money. So at least there's that. At least there is that that's down here. Oh. I mean, it sounds like it's going to be the other way around here. We, uh, so, I mean, I would still need a bow. I have the ammo, but not the bow. So the only bow we've seen so far has been the one that the assassin has.
Yeah. What happened to him? He's not gold, he's a skeleton. I guess doing the portal turned him into skeleton. Oh game. You are way you you have a bold misconception about how good you think this looks if you think we're doing a photo mode. Uh salve friend. I'm Galerius. Mind telling me who you are and what you were doing in the Shrine of Proserpina? Well, no. Uh, I don't think so. I've never seen you before in my life. Your name's Galarius. Oh, Bacchus, how much did I drink last night? Uh, sorry to have bothered you. I have to go. Since you seem to be in a hurry, you should try out this device I made. Worked real hard on it. Device? Uh, a zipline bar? Okay, there was that rope that we saw. Thanks for the zipline bar. I guess I'll take it. The pulley to the rope over the lake and hang on to the handles. If it works, it'll be faster than walking. Why are you giving this to me? And if it doesn't work, worst thing that can happen is you'll take a swim in the lake. I haven't quite summoned the courage to test it myself. But don't worry, it's completely safe. Probably. I, I guess I'll be going. All right. See you around. Will I? I mean, but I didn't really see you again the first time around after uh, we first spoke. I don't know if we actually will be seeing him again. You. Hello. Catalyst. Cannot catch the drops of water, and the tree you grasp at eludes you. Just as the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls. But it does not notice the crowds that come. So what's your story? The bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Some crowd the Forum, some the house of the ruler of the depths. Others follow their trades, imitating their previous lives. I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. They never do. You know a way out of here. There is only a downward path, gloomy with fatal yew trees. It leads through dumb silence to the infernal regions. Do you need help? Help me? You cannot help me. I have seen things. A pattern, a terrible pattern. It is better for you if you remain ignorant. Pandora's box must stay closed. I'll say no more. What do you think about the Golden Rule? The bloodless shadows. This is their punishment. Right. I'll be going now. The newly arrived are ignorant of the road before them. All right. Well, we saw her uh, the first time that we were we were here, but we didn't take the time to speak with her. Livia. Would you stop muttering like Medea over a cauldron? You'll scare away my customers. They follow their trades, imitating their previous lives, but they are ignorant. This again. You're in a world of your own, aren't you? Yoink. The many shall suffer for the sins of the right. Well, I guess she's getting golded too. Follow sentience back to the portal. 
Oh no, my life for a handful of coins. Well, I mean, if you wanted to amass uh, a fortune with which to buy things, you could just, I guess, keep doing that you repeatedly. Ah, ignorant of the road before them. Cerberus lifts his triple head and lets out his threefold graying. Livia, would you stop? Me? Just try talking to her again later. You scare away my customers. They follow their trades, imitating their previous lives, but they are ignorant. This again. You're in a world of your own, aren't you? Ah, oh, you're here. I'm so glad you decided to visit. I'm Aurelia, and, uh, I hope I'm not being too forward, but the moment I laid eyes on you, I was intrigued. Mm. There's something dangerous about you, like a prowling manticore. You're referring to my third nipple. Yes, I uh, have it on display proudly. I'm glad you noticed that. And you're as charming as you are beautiful. Ugh, coming on a bit strong, don't you think? No. I take back what I said. Suddenly, I don't find you so intriguing anymore. Let's just forget that ever happened, so we can at least do business. So, what brings you to my tavern? What is your story? Ugh, let it go. Nothing's going to happen between us. I mean, I, I said it to everyone. I said that to, to the lady over there. It's like, I'm not... What, do you know a way out of here? You know, normally, I'd expect you to buy me a drink before asking if I want to get out of here. I think you have a one-track mind, miss. I was asking about an escape from the city. I guess that went right over your head. Never mind. As a matter of fact, I do know a way out. I'm happy to tell you all about it, but this is valuable information we're talking about and I don't just give it out like some cheap oracle so how badly do you want it is it worth say a thousand denarii to you tell me more about what I'd be buying well, I can't tell you too much or you'd figure it out for yourself but I promise you you'll never have to spend another hour in this city ever again i mean i can easily do that we can just, like we could just press escape and go to the main menu if we want to do that but uh if you have a way out why haven't you just used it yourself simple it's a one-way trip and i'm not ready to go just yet i like my life here one day maybe but not now isn't it kind of unethical to keep all these people trapped in here knowing there's a way out? That sounds like it might be a sin. I think of it this way. I have something of value and I'm willing to share it for a price. That's not unethical. That's just good business. Now, do you want it or not? How do I know this isn't a scam? If I took your money without giving you what I promised, I'd be breaking the golden rule, wouldn't I? And I have no interest in doing that. I mean, it's not really... If you're vague enough about what you're promising, then you could find ways around that. You may... Like, maybe you want to give me, I don't know, some sort of token stating that I own the information without actually giving me the information. And I could... You could tell me... The token appreciates in value, uh, but I don't actually own the information. And I could, and later on, I could sell that token for much more than one thousand. And I mean, technically, you wouldn't be breaking the golden rule. Um, so there are ways around that. I don't know how the gods feel about that kind of thing. I don't have that kind of money right now. Well, perhaps you could take out a loan. I understand Maliolus has lent money to others, on occasion. 
What do you think about the golden rule? I just try not to think about it. Drink helps with that. As the saying goes, to drink is human, so we drink. So, would you say getting shit-faced is not a sin? Have you heard any interesting gossip? Certainly, for ten denarii. I don't have ten denarii. How embarrassing for you. Yes, I am very poor. I'll be going now. All right, see ya. Cheating must be a problem amongst the Romans. Theophilus had an orgy with four girls. So, oh, I think we saw that before. We saw that in um, in the bathroom, didn't we? Oh yeah, this. We don't want to do that. The gods will see. Guess I'm playing a lot of RE4. When I saw those barrels, the first thing I thought of was I need to smash them with my knife. I cannot. I do not have a knife. I cannot smash them. And if I did, maybe it would be a sin. I'm glad we can talk to the goose. Laid by the city's goose. I guess that's not stealing. What was he pointing at when he turned to gold? Oh, there you are. Salve. Ah, it's you again. Hope you're settling in, friend. Now. What's in your mind? What's your story? Well, it's a long one and kind of sad, but I don't mind telling it. I have time. I'm a farmer. Always have been. I grew up in a small village in Britannia, Camulodunum, with my parents and two little sisters. Lovely part of the world. One day, when I was about 20, my father and I were in the top paddock, loading our cart, when some Roman legionaries came along, demanding produce for their men. My father told me to run into the house for his axe, and so I did. I sprinted so fast I almost threw up, but by the time I got back, he was bleeding out on the ground, and our cart was empty. That was my first encounter with the legions. My mother died of a broken heart soon after, and things went downhill from there. I took over the farmstead, but I was young. It was a struggle. More raiding started before too long. We'd come outside in the morning to find animals missing, our stores pillaged. These legion thugs just took whatever they wanted. One night, when my sisters and I had nothing left to steal, there was a knock at the door. I knew who they were, and what they wanted. I got my father's old axe. Pulled the door open real quick, and before that soldier knew it, split his face right down the middle. But there were more of them. I never saw how many, because the next thing I knew, I was waking up with a mouth full of dirt and lungs full of smoke. My home was reduced to ash. My sisters, dead. And they left me alive to see what they'd done. Still burns whenever I think about it. Wow, you sound like you should be the protagonist of this game. Like, I'm just kind of futzing around, not, like, not knowing what I'm doing. It sounds like you have a quest to go on. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, well, I wasn't the only one this happened to. It wasn't long before Boudicca led thousands of Britons in a rebellion against the Romans. Unfortunately, there were just too many of them. And those of us who survived 
they enslaved. So, then I found myself being transported all the way to Rome to be sold to the highest bidder. I spent a few years working for my new master, learning the Romans' ways, Romanized my name and everything. Tried to escape a couple of times, but they always found me, and I'd just end up right back where I was. I'd probably still be there, too, if it wasn't for the stampedes breaking out. You see, about seven months ago, an enormous fire broke out in Rome. Everybody was running down toward the river, screaming and shouting. I'd never seen anything like it. Human beings acting like cattle. I got swept up with them somehow, and the rest is a blur. The next thing I knew, some stranger was dragging me out of a river. Stumbled across this place, and I started my life over again. Ah, there is a sure, a sure lot of people coming out of rivers, aren't there? Well, I'm glad things worked out in the end. Kind of. I mean, that... Honestly, not like there wasn't really any part of that story where things worked out, but I mean, you're here, I guess. That's what I thought too, for a while. But it seems the gods aren't done tormenting me yet. See, I finally had my own farm again, safe from the grasping hands of the Romans. Or so I thought. Until Sentius the Decurian demanded I hand over all my produce. It's for the good of us all, he says. Only he takes the best bits for himself, of course. He even told me if I refuse his demands, I'll break the golden rule. I'm not sure I believe him, but then what if he's right? So, it turns out our dear old magistrate is no better than the legion thugs who took everything from me. I'm right back where I began. But don't you worry, Nemesis is waiting. And he'll get his, one day. He'll get his. Uh, forget I said that last part, will you? I get carried away sometimes. No, no, no. I mean, where I come from, grumbling that the people in power will get there someday. That's like the... that's like a pastime. Sure, we, we, sure. Thanks, friend. I knew I liked you. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling. Was there something else you wanted to talk about? Do you know a way out of here? Well, as much as I'd love to get out of here, the harvest's always more fruitful in another man's field, isn't it? But Scintilla, Sentius's daughter, went missing a few weeks back. Could be she found a way out. If anyone knows for sure, it'll be her sister, Sentia. But she'd never tell the likes of me. Yeah, we did have a conversation with her. She did not like us. But that was last time, and this is a new time loop, so she hasn't seen us before in this case. What do you think about the Golden Rule? Oh, I don't give it much thought these days. I mean, everybody here has got their own view about what we need to do to survive. But I say, let's spend less time arguing about what it means to be good and just get on with it, you know? I, I can understand that, but considering how everyone seems to be at the mercy of an inscrutable god with inscrutable rules, it does make sense to be arguing about what it means to to sin or to not sin there's a lot of questions involved there i mean even galarius himself said he's unsure if the magistrate is correct that disobeying him would be breaking the golden rule and it's important to know if that is the case what do you think about the election uh i can't see how i could vote for either candidate i don't like sentius much but maliolus is almost as bad even i could do a better job me, a farmer, and I've never given a speech or put on a toga in my life. Well, I'll be going now, I guess. All right, see you around. Maybe in these time loops we have to convince Galerius to run for office. Look, everyone in town enjoys Galerius's tasty cabbages. What have these other two candidates ever done for you? He's got a point there. The cabbages are good.
Don't steal anything, don't hurt anyone, don't. Whoever wrote this didn't get a chance to finish, evidently. Well, we know about stealing. And also hurting. Because of what the assassin did. So we have confirmed that both of these things uh, do break the golden rule. What else might break the golden rule? We still don't know. Of course, stealing in a game like this is the most easy, easy sin to do. Can I get around that? Thank you. No, that I no I can't apparently. There's a box back there. Eh. Can I jump on top of you? Eh. Eh. Hmm. Those are nice gloves. No. You'd think I'd be able to just wiggle through, but we've established that this game does not have wiggle room. I feel like I should be able to wiggle. I cannot. Oh, it's the same person with the same gloves. I guess the statues are not unique. There she is again. Ooh, a note from Kabash. A dream diary from Kabash in which he describes his recurring dreams about a stranger named Kerti. Kabash to Kabash, I told Lucretia about the dreams I've been having, and she said it might help her divine the meaning if I wrote them down. It happened again last night. The man by the river was there, as always, his face shrouded in shroud shadow from that peculiar ram headdress. Once again, he introduced himself as Kerti and told me he dragged me from the river. He seemed to smirk as he said his name, as if it meant something I could not understand. Indeed, the name rings a bell, but I cannot for the life of me remember where I heard it. I do not think I will sleep soundly until I know who is Kerti. It does not seem like there are other pages. Strange old vase painted with geometric shapes. It's not Roman. Where did this come from? A phallic charm, thought by the Romans to have divine protective properties. Big old, big old stone dick. Got to put this on display. And very, you could put it in a prominent place. Circular stone disc with a symbol of a fish carved into it might be religious. Here's a chest. I guess we can I mean, I guess we can't steal it. An incomplete note addressed to Sinner. This is your final warning, Sinner. Okay, well, I, I guess we know who's threatening Virgil. It's Rufius. We're solving a mystery. Ask Fabia who is threatening Virgil. Well, we didn't. Because we found out anyway. The writing's backwards on the back, huh? Have we... I mean, this is Rufi... I guess this is Rufius' home. Have we seen Rufius hanging around? Gotta find if we have seen him in town. Here's our place. When things go bad. That's where we, we would get out. Wonder why someone would have gotten up on that ledge during the big goldening.
Mm hmm. Like, did someone get up on the fountain, or was he put on the fountain afterwards? Like, some of them are clearly places decorations. Right. The best behavior, I trust. Hey, I mean, if I wasn't, you'd know, right? Everyone would be turning to gold. What is it, citizen? What's your story? I'm a legionary of the first Italica, but there's not a lot of fighting down here. So the Magistrate has assigned me other duties. I act as the Magistrate's right-hand man, keeping an eye on his daughters. Uh, daughter, I should say. And the others, and making sure they're all behaving. I also keep a register of new arrivals. How did you end up here? It pulled out of a river, maybe? I'm from Liguria, up north originally. I was doing all right for myself. Twelve years into my service. Had a nice girl lined up for when it was all over. Not anymore. She's probably figured I'm long gone and moved on by now. I try not to think about it. My commander sent me to deliver a message to Rome. While I was there, I thought I'd do something nice for my girl. And pick up a little pendant from a silversmith. That's when the crowd started flooding through the streets. Shouting fire. People were screaming trampling each other. Then some genetric and future chill tried to take advantage of the chaos and pinch my pendant. I remember chasing him through the crowds, down towards the river. And then, nothing. Blacked out and woke up near here. No idea how I ended up floating so far down river. But, I'm fortunate to be alive, I suppose. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. Ah, don't be. As Seneca the Younger said, Difficulty strengthen the mind as labor does the body. That said, Centella's disappearance has been more difficult than I'd care to admit. What can you tell me about the Magistrate? He's one of the better commanders I've ever had, that's for sure. Good stoic. Lives by Seneca's words. Treat your inferior as you would wish your superior to treat you. Can't ask for much more than that. Do you know a way out of here? I went around asking the same questions when I first arrived. Never did find a way out. But I learned how to accept my situation. To bear trials with a calm mind robs misfortune of its strength and burden. That's from Seneca the Younger, if you're interested. Can I see the citizen register? I don't see why not. Just make sure I get it back by tomorrow. All right. Aurelia, class commoner. Uh, tavern Keeper, Tavern in Slum, Claims to No Way Out. Yes, we met her. Claudia, Patrician, Wife of Malaleus, Villa, Decius, Commoner, Merchant, General, Forum, D Domitius, Class Commoner, Malarius's Guard, he's in the Slum, Dulius, Commoner, Unable to Work, Slum, Imprisoned in Warehouse, there's a prisoner somewhere, Equidia, Patrician, Vestal Priestess, is that the person who's standing right next to us right now? Villa Lower. Uh, Fabia Commoner, Baker in the slum. Galerius Commoner, Farmer in slum. Georgius, he's a foreigner. He's a merchant, clothes in form. Hannibal, foreigner, fortress scraps, slum. Died in cistern? Well, there is someone down there. Horatius, commoner, guard, slum. Kabash, foreigner, fisherman, slum. Disappeared, you say. Julia, patrician, debt bondsman to Malaleus in the villa. Livia, yeah, we met her, commoner. She's a hairdresser, slum. She now refuses to work. Yes, she apparently has seen what, sh what should not be seen. Her mind has been opened. Lucretia, a foreigner. She's a nurse in the slum. Malaleus, patrician, he's a money lender. He's uh, in the villa in the middle. Not to be trusted. Navia, commoner, physician, quarters NA. Locked yourself. Yeah, that's right. The doctor has locked herself up. Um, we don't know why. Octavia, patrician, uh, she cleans, she gardens. She's in the villa lower. Rufius, a commoner. Duty on patrol in the slum. He's increasingly agitated lately. Sentia, patrician. She, a pupil. Villa. Restricted to her villa for her safety. 
Uh, Centilla, Patrician, Pupil, Villa Upper, missing, right? Senshi and Centilla are the daughters. Centilla is missing somehow. No one knows where she might be. Sentius, uh, the Patrician, the Magistrate, Villa Upper. Ulpius, Commoner, Dept Bondsman, the Malaeus, and the Villa Virgil, Commoner, Architect Forum. And that is it. Thanks. I'll sh I sure, I'll give it back to you tomorrow, as if that exists. I'm not sure why you said it like that. But whatever. Yeah, I could hear the, the quotes around the tomorrow. Not sure what that was about. What do you think about the golden rule? Well, as I always say, it's kind of like a divine version of the practice of decimation in the Legion. By threatening to execute one in ten men, the idea is to ensure order and discipline among everyone. And it works. If you knew you could be executed because your brother-in-arms is planning a mutiny, well... You'd bloody well watch him like hundred-eyed Argus, wouldn't you? Because your only chance of saving yourself is to stop bad things before they happen. Makes us all responsible for keeping each other in check. It's brutal, of course, but effective. The Legion wouldn't be the most formidable force in the world without it. Where I'm from, that would be considered collective punishment, which is a war crime, sir. War crime? Isn't that a contradiction in terms? As Cicero said, in times of war, the law falls silent. Ah, but what if you're in a state of war all the time? Th what, is, what does Cicero have to say about that? Our worlds are very different. Seems that way. War crimes. Ridiculous. Are you saying that you're in favor of the Golden Rule? What's done is done. I was forced to execute my brothers in arms, and those memories will always visibly in my sleep. But life is harsh, and I've come to accept my lot. As with the Golden Rule, I don't have any control over it. So railing against it would be like trying to stop the seasons or the tides. As Seneca the Younger wrote, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. Not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have. Which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. Let's talk about something else. If you like. Who are you going to vote for? Not that it's any of your business. But my loyalty is and always will be with Sentius. Unfortunately, I don't think my vote is going to make any difference today. See, Domitius has been going around town, shoring up votes for Maliolus with lies, bribery, and intimidation. The man's a savage, but he's a gladiator, so people fear and respect him more than they should. Sentius knows about it, of course, but he doesn't have the same rat cunning as Maliolus. This place will be different with that sleaze at the helm. But I try not to worry about things I can't change. Can I help? I appreciate the thought. But you're new here. And I just can't see how you could make an impact in the time between now and the election this afternoon. In any case, if you're interested in the election, go and have a chat with Equitia, the Vestal Priestess. She'll be overseeing proceedings. Can we talk about Centilla? What business is that of yours? I'm looking for her. A lot of people have been looking for her. But it's been three weeks, and we've found nothing. What makes you think you can do better? Sometimes fresh eyes help. Hmm. I suppose that's true. I know what you did to her. No. Uh, did you notice anything suspicious before she went missing? Centilla was always a kind, well-behaved young woman. I admit, her disappearance really caught me off guard. If anyone knows something, I'd expect it to be Sentia, Maliolus, Claudia, or Domitius. But none of them will tell me anything. You might fare better, though, I suppose. Let's talk about something else. Fine. I'll be going now. All right. Please keep an eye out for anything that might lead us to Centilla. The person who was there next to him has gone off somewhere. Mm. 
<sighs> Name's Rufius. Better watch your step. Oh, you're the guy who wrote the note. What's your story? Can't talk long. Got to stay sharp, but... Uh, family's from Seleucia and Tigris. Babylon province. But I've been roaming a long time now. Even joined the legions. The sixth. The one they call Ironclads. How did you end up here? Same way as everyone else. Why are you still wearing the legionary armor? Because we're all in grave danger. Is it not obvious? Why don't you have a weapon then? Mm. Magistrate made me toss it in the chasm. Stupid. Going to have to improvise now. Not much of a talker, are you? If you were dealing with what I am, you wouldn't be either. Are you suffering from rheumatism? Nobody is supposed to know about that. Did Lucretia tell you? <laughs> well, yeah, but now we actually figured it out on our own. Gah. Look, I haven't been at my best lately. All my joints ache constantly, and, and the pain, it has a way of messing with your head. I get stirred up by things that shouldn't bother me, and, and then there's the statues, and my doubts about my faith, and I just, I just want to scream. You want to help me? Do what Lucretia hasn't been able to do. And find me something to make the pain go away. Until then, get out of my face. Didn't seem like we got an update to uh, a quest or anything. We have seen that graffiti before. Let's go take a different way. Mm. Yeah. in that great temple up there on the bluff. Salve, stranger, and welcome to our idyllic little slice of the empire. I'm Dacius. Right, and we have, we did speak to him in our first loop. He's, he's gouging. Gouging prices. We also, well, in the last loop, we also did have the order to execute him. We didn't have the means to do that. Um... But, I mean, that order hasn't been given in this particular loop. I guess when we meet the Magistrate, we could say we want to kill him again. But we don't have the way that it means to do that. It's not like doing it would probably solve the problem. Ah, a fellow traveler from a faraway land. Ah, the only time I've spoken to you is when you've been grieving over the death of that one person. I haven't spoken to you in another uh, context yet. Greetings, I'm Georgius. It gladdens me to see another foreigner in our midst. We must stick together, you and I. And I must say, my sartorial friend, your clothing is most extraordinary. Leather boots in place of sandals, trousers with precise stitching, and such a curious design. I have traveled distant trade routes from the markets of Damascus to the farms of India, and never have I seen anyone dressed quite like you. Tell me, I must know. From which exotic part of the world do you hail? My nation doesn't exist yet. Is this a riddle, or perhaps you mean to say you feel like you are ahead of your time? I feel the same way. Another reason for us to stick together. We will have much time here to get to know one another. But for now, do you require assistance? I know you do not require clothing, so information perhaps? What's your story? My story? How kind of you to ask. 
I am a tailor and I run the humble shop in the forest. Why do you set up a tailor shop here? You mean to say, with all the turmoil and terror of the golden rule and so few customers, why bother setting shop at all? Yes? I'll tell you, it is precisely because of the golden rule that I wish to remind my friends of the importance of looking one's best. I say, the more of our customs we preserve down here, the more we can preserve a semblance of normality, the better our chances of keeping our heads. Don't you agree? Oh, I thought you were going to say it's the golden rule makes it important for us to look our best. So when we eventually turn into gold statues, we will be very sharp looking gold statues. I thought that's where you were going with that. It was not. Fair enough. How did you end up here? A good question. A very good question indeed. And I would be happy to tell you if only I could remember it clearly myself. Why don't you tell me what you do remember, and make sure you leave in the part about getting washed up on a river. Hmm. I remember I had just been to Rome to sell an extraordinary selection of wares, and drowning in coin, I decided to celebrate my success. I rented a prestigious villa by the Tiber, invited over a few select friends, and we began making our way through some of the most exquisite wine money could buy. Quite a lot of it, in fact. Now, I have had visions and awoken in strange places before. I have even found myself naked in the desert sands more than once, but none of that compares to this. This time, I remember people screaming, then falling into a void as empty as time before creation, gasping for air, and then nothing. When I regained my faculties, I was lying naked by the banks of the Tiber, gods know how many miles from my villa. So you floated down the Tiber? Indeed. I'm lucky I was carrying a little extra weight. <laughs> I believe it kept me afloat. In any case, it seems I'd been rescued and resuscitated by a benevolent stranger. I went to find firewood for his campfire, stumbled across a cave, and discovered that trapdoor temple. And here I am. Hmm. Let's talk about something else. Anything you like. Do you know a way out of here? Not so loud. What are you playing at? Bro, don't say that so loud. Sorry, did I say the wrong thing? Have you not been told about the last attempt? The last attempt? Oh, then I suppose this duty falls to me. Ah, it is a long story. It's not as if I'm going anywhere. Aha, you are witty. I like that. Of course, the first question many of us asks when we first arrive is, how do I escape? It is only natural after all. And scaling the chasm wall is out of the question, for it is simply too steep and too far. But as they say, if the wind fails, use the oars. And here the second option is to leave the way we came in, through the shaft above the bathhouse. See, the shaft is quite high, but if one gathered up enough wood, one could make a series of ladders and climb one's way out. I can do that. I admire your enthusiasm, my friend, but please allow me to explain why this is inadvisable. There was an attempt made by resourceful fellows who lived here some years ago. They even decided to keep records of their escape attempt for posterity. Unfortunately, as soon as they began to carry the first ladder down the hallway, they heard a godlike voice sink the entire city, and that, tragically, is where their tail ends. So it seems that to merely attempt escape is to invite the wrath of whichever god oversees this place, and so I say it is best to not even discuss it aloud. All right. So, well, I mean, doesn't seem like talking about it is a sin, but bringing the ladders to the bathhouse was a sin. So if you actually take action to do it, it's a sin, I guess. Got it. Thanks. I guess that's the third thing we can now confirm as being a sin. What do you think about the golden rule? Ah, yes. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. As a Greek, this is nothing new to me. It is how our gods operate. Hmm, why do you say that? Have you not heard the tale of the god Hades? 
He was the first to learn this dreadful lesson when he abducted Persephone and imprisoned her in the underworld. When Demeter, the mother of Persephone, learned of this, she did not punish Hades, the guilty one. Instead, she changed the climate of Earth so that it became hot and dry. Nothing grew. The grain turned to empty husks and the rivers dried up. Innocent people died by the tens of thousands until at last the other gods were forced to act lest they have no worshippers left. So yes, we know this rule. This has always been the case. The golden rule has merely brought it into focus. Well, what can we do about it? If we are to survive, I say we must each keep the simple wisdom of Thales of Miletus, first of the seven sages of Greece, who said, Avoid doing what you would blame others for doing. Sounds simple enough. It does, doesn't it? But it is not enough for us to do this alone. For even if 99% of us adopt this principle, that will never be enough. Sadly, no matter how well we protect ourselves, the life's work of many good people can be undone in the blink of an eye by a single selfish act. Hmm. So you're saying we need to kill that 1% of people that would ruin it for the rest of us. I hear ya. I know. I've seen it happen. Ah, the voice of experience. I am sorry for your loss, my friend. But on a lighter note, I will say one thing for the Golden Rule. For all their grim and haunting poses, these golden statues do make magnificent models for my clothing. Do they not? <laughs> Yes, but they... Have you heard them talking? Because I think they talk to me. I'm not sure if the statues that you're modeling your clothes on appreciate it. It's hard... It's hard to say. Who are you going to vote for? That, my friend, is quite the dilemma. But after some reflection, I'm leaning toward voting for Malone. I do not enjoy the thought of another visit from Domitius if I voted the wrong way. Anything I can do to change that? Wink, wink. Nothing comes to my mind, my friend. Hmm, well, I'll be going now. I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. Well, he's nice. Dyes for color and clothing extracted from plants and insects. Yeah, do not steal his denarius. You look well, my sartorial friend. I'm just examining your 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 place. Don't worry, I'm not stealing anything. You know, if if I did, we'd all turn to gold. You know, you know how that goes. Salve. Ah, oh, Virgil. Ah, a new face. Salve, and welcome to a little community. My name's impossible to pronounce for most people, so you can just call me Virgil. Who are you gonna vote for, Virgil? Well, Maliolis is talking about loosening some of the restrictions in this place. And while it's all a bit vague, at least he has a vision. Anything I can do to change that? My vote isn't for sale, if that's what you're asking. So it doesn't seem like we have the option of talking to him about that one uh, particular note. Unless, because uh, I'm assuming that if, if things are grayed out, that it would just be the same dialogue. Nice to talk to you. So like we we now know who was the one who who wrote that. We could see if using the gray dialogue would result in anything different. That empty shrine. It's going to collapse at and welcome back. Well, I'm an architect. Help out with but you <laughs> you would there are much but once some people I mean which means one of and I'm pretty good 
then I hope you'll agree that there are only two ways of dealing with unfair rulers. The first is to leave. The second is to remove the ruler from power. And it seems leaving may not be an option. How do you remove a god from power? Good question. It's best if I say no more, but I hope you'll give it some thought. <laughs> I like how he's look, looking back and forth like that. Those shifty eyes. Well, Maliolis is talking. Well, we did. We talked to him about that. Ma hmm. The first time around, we did talk to him about the graffiti on his on his on his wall. Some people say it's div I mean, which me and I'm. Pre Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Help up, did I choose a different? Um. Gladly, personally. A different option to get him to talk about that. Hey, I'm not saying it's impossible. You mean given the way unfortunate you see, there's an op and of course, so we're unless. Hmm. Of course. Not sure. Talk to you. Pretty sure that the first time we spoke to him, we did get the option of asking him about this graffiti. Not sure Sometimes where that option is now. And I think whatever is in there, it has to be important. Oh, it's you. You have to do something. A man arrived in the baths, a real nasty sort, with his face all covered up, and he's got a weapon. You have to do something, or he's going to break the golden rule. I'll see what I can do. He's still in there, somewhere. I have to hide. Find me in this empty shrine when it's over. Don't go in there. What? Why? Just trust me. Uh, all right, um, fine. Come and find me in my bakery instead. Please be careful. All right. She's not going to die because she went into this anyway. See, now we can die. She was getting all the fun, getting to die in there every time. So I, it doesn't really matter for as far as this one goes, this time loop that um, she's going to go back to her bakery. Considering, oh, considering that uh, everyone's going to get turned to gold anyway. Okay, guess it was loading a new area. A Greek liar, played by being strummed with a plectrum. So what causes that temple to collapse? Is it just someone walking in? Oh, there's someone here. Is it just someone walks in and somehow, I don't know, triggers something that causes every everything to fall down? Come and join me by the fire. Okay. Welcome, welcome. May I ask your name? I'm I Say. It's a sincere pleasure to meet you. Tell me. What brings you all the way down here? I found this place by accident. 
Then perhaps the fates brought you here to learn the secrets of this place. I will tell you everything I know, but first, a request. I have been living down here alone for many years, with nobody to talk to but myself. The one thing I long for above all else before I die is a good philosophical argument with somebody astute. I'm hoping that person is you. Let us find out with this simple question. Have you deduced the name of the god responsible for the golden rule? Well, if you're asking me if I'm equipped to have a philosophical duel with you, I see people attempting to do that all the time on Twitter. Is that good enough? Well, yes, I, I have not deduced the name of the god responsible as of yet. Hmm. You have much to learn. It's best if you figure it out on your own. Come back once you've made progress. I'd really like you to tell me, though. Then you should speak with your contemporaries in the city above. Ask them about their stories and see if you detect a pattern of some sort. You mean everyone falling in a, in a river? Yeah, I mean, I noticed that one. Self, you would never believe me if I told you. I know about the river, like, that's that's come up many times. A sculpture of an unknown Greek general, his helmet pulled up off his head. Large tub, which has been converted into a bed. Ah, you've returned. Well, I'm... N no, I'm actually leaving. All right, so there's a mysterious man in his cave. Uh, apparently, no one knows about this man. And he lives on his own. And he wants me to come back when I know the name of the god who rules this place. Talk to the assassin. See if anything different happens now. Stop right there. I am looking for type. Yes. So thank God you're here. Uh, I saw him worshiping in a small round shrine just inside the city. Second building on your left. Hurry. If you hurry, you might be able to catch him. Please. Thank you. For your service to the Empire, I'll let you live for now. But you'd best make sure our paths don't cross again. Alright, I'll get out of your way. He's right in there. You go a little further, you'll see him. Curse you, cultist. We did it. Oh. Finally crap. I guess this doesn't count as stealing, because he's dead. Bounty notice. Emperor Nero has ordered the execution of a cultist. Can point us different colored eyes. By order of Emperor Nero, all loyal sons of Rome are ordered to hunt and execute the arsonist and murderer Tiberius Quinctius Crispus 
and citizen from the Aventine district of Rome. He's about 40 to 50 years old. He is average height, average build, has dark hair, has one green eye and one blue eye. He's typically clean shaven. He's known associate of cultists and suffers from delusions of grandeur. Have we noticed anyone with heterochromia, heterochromia as of yet? Don't remember seeing that. All right. So, well, I guess technically we did kill him because we knew what was going to happen. I guess the gods do not consider that to be murder. And taking the stuff from him was not considered to be stealing because he was dead. So, so. Well, we have a bow. Like, if we got those arrows from the sewer, we would, we, like, now we'd have the means to execute people. Now we'd have that. Hey, you're not thinking about going into the cistern, are you? I know about your creature. Don't worry about me. Well, it's your funeral. Let's see. Well, it wasn't it wasn't this way. This is going back up. Oh. And we've got a new quest by going here. Find a creative way into the upper cistern. Hmm. A creative way, you say? Goldman went. Don't see him or hear him. That's fine. Mm hmm. There we go. Check it out. Look who's got a look who's got a weapon. Magistrate. We're finally alone. I assume you already know who I am. May I know your name? I'm I say. And we've had this conversation before. We have? Wait, if I understand correctly, someone is about to break the golden rule. Forcing me to create a portal in time to bring you here? I must have entrusted you with figuring out who the culprit is. Only, I assume we failed. And you had to start over. Is that about right? If so, what happened? Uh, no, we didn't break it. We couldn't stop it from being broken. The assassin broke... well... I also broke it because I stole some money. That doesn't count. The one that counts is the assassin breaking it. 
Ah, I see. Look, it's unfortunate, but all that matters now is that you make use of what you've learned and gathered and do better next time. Now, I assume you've sought me out again for a reason. Hell yeah, I want to get to the killing. Well, I mean, let's, we'll ask him what his story is. Sextus Sentius Imperiosus is my name, though Magistrate is the proper way to address me. Before I wound up here, I was a decurion in the cavalry. That text was white, but we did we did hear his background before. Barbarians. Yeah, we did we did do these options before. Very well. If I did, I'd have led. Of course. What is? Okay, I've already figured out how to stop at least one person from breaking it. What happens now? If you stopped one person from breaking it and you're still here, then there must be someone else about to break it. Still, allow me to explain. When I discovered the ritual to Proserpina, the instructions came with a warning about paradoxes. The crux of it is this. If you do anything to change the course of history in such a way that your very being here is impossible, you will have created a paradox. To illustrate, when the golden rule is broken, I will open the doorway that will bring you here to prevent it from being broken. If you manage to succeed in saving our lives, then I will have no reason to open the doorway, and you will never have come here. A paradox, you see? The same thing would happen if you, say, inadvertently, allowed me to die. If I can't summon you, then you can't be here, obviously. If either of those things were to happen, I am given to understand, you would be flung back to your original time, having changed the course of history for us and yourself. So the fact that you are still here means someone is going to break the golden rule, and there is yet work to do. Understand? Yeah, I remember this explanation um, from before. So that's what we're going with, so sure. Excellent. So... It looks like you'll have to continue your investigation. Now, was there anything else you wanted to ask? Of course. What is it? I think I know who it is. Yes. Well, let's see. Last time, I believe we did say we we, we were naming Decius. Why do you say that? Because he's gouging. Indeed. That is abhorrent. And even if doing so hasn't directly broken the golden rule, it's not difficult to imagine this behavior provoking someone to theft or violence. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. But before we proceed, I must ask, are you sure he's the one? Absolutely. Well then, in that case, as much as it pains me to do so, I must act decisively to ensure the survival of my people. As Magistrate, I hereby declare him an enemy of Rome and authorize his execution by your hand, forthwith. I will take care of it. Thank you. Please act quickly before it's too late. All right. We have, we have been sanctioned by the state to use lethal force. You look well, my sartorial friend. Hey, Georgius, I would never say you're the one who's going to break the golden rule. I would never say that. Salve. Hello, Virgil. You're outside your store? Uh, no, it doesn't look like he has new options. Opius loves Centilla, correct it to Opius killed Centilla. Oh. 
A suspect? Right over there. I wonder if we could take like a little fall. Just a little fall. Okay, a little bit of a fall. I'm guessing that Promethean fire's not for sale. Oh, my flashlight? Nah. You there. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I couldn't help but notice that fine bow you carry. Oh, do you like it? Oh, dear, how you managed to get your hands on it, especially in the light of our dear old magistrate's ban. But I'm impressed. And before you ask, no, I wouldn't dream of trying to buy it from you. I have no use for a wooden bow myself. But I would like to propose a joint business venture of sorts. Go on. Tell me, do you have any idea how people here end up as golden statues? Yes, the statues come to life and fire golden bows arrows at them. Everyone knows this. And here I was thinking I was the only one to figure it out. In any case, supposedly one or two of those arrows is enough to turn a full grown man into gold. Now, of course, that is a travesty, a terrible, horrible waste of human life, which has to be stopped. And yet, on the other hand, I can't help but think of a tale told by that Greek fella Aesop, the goose that laid the golden egg. With the ability to transmute organic matter into gold, one could create infinite wealth. Use your imagination, golden animals, insects, trees, and plants, the Midas touch Without the drawbacks, we are talking riches beyond imagining. And even if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, half of infinite wealth is still infinite. Interested? But Decius, there are golden people all around this place. Does this actually have any value here? I mean, maybe if you could leave... Maybe, but considering the plethora of golden statues here, I don't know how much value gold actually has. You know, I think the golden goose is meant to be a cautionary tale. Look, I might have skimmed over that one, but don't be so pedantic. Are you interested or not? Sounds grossly unethical. Oh, I'm not suggesting we use such a bow on people. There's no profit in breaking the golden rule. So, what are you suggesting? Excellent. So, the first question is, how do we get our hands on one of those golden bows? Now, I have a plan. But first, tell me, are you familiar with the story of the goddess Diana? Sure. Then none of this should be a surprise to you. Diana is our goddess of the hunt, the moon, and the underworld, depending on who you ask. The one thing priests and poets agree on is that she carried with her a golden bow and a quiver of golden arrows. And it just so happens that there is a shrine of Diana in this very forum with a prominent statue of the goddess herself. And would you like to guess what she's holding in her hand? Fortune smile on you, brother. Thank you. A golden bow? Precisely. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent in that temple staring at it, trying to figure out how to retrieve it without breaking you know what. But you want me to steal it? Oh, gods, no. If you tried that, we'd all be dead within moments, I'm sure. No. Here's what I propose. You give your bow to me, I cover it in a thin layer of gold leaf, and we create a replica of a golden bow. Then you enter the shrine, extinguish the braziers, and under cover of darkness, swap out the fake for the original. It's not theft exactly, it's more of a, a trade. But make no mistake, this is a dangerous path, and there's no way of knowing where it will lead. But in my experience, all the best adventures begin with a risky first step. Now, you must have questions, ask away. It's not a risky first step, it's the risky only step. It's both first and last step. Why can't I just take it? Because the gods would see you, of course. Hence, my proposal. Ah, that's why we have to extinguish the lamps. So the gods won't see me. Why can't you just do it yourself? I'm more of an ideas man. Whereas you're obviously the more resourceful and heroic type. I have complete confidence in you. Isn't it extremely dangerous? When Prometheus stole fire from the gods and became a hero to all mankind, do you think he was worried about the danger? That's not a fair point. 
we, do we want to end up like Prometheus? That's all the questions I had. So, are you in, partner? No. Are you sure? Last chance. If you don't like action or horror elements, feel free to decline. I do like action or horror elements. But fine, maybe we will do it. Wonderful. Now, if you'll hand over your bow, I can get started applying a layer of gold leaf. This is a quality weapon. Now, bear with me for a moment. Stranger. Now that's a weapon. We got it. Gold, gold bow. Now I've gone and unlocked the shrine of Diana for you, so as quick as you can, head on inside. It's just at the end of the street on the left. May the gods not watch over you. All right. <sighs> Fine. We came here to kill him. I guess what we're actually going to do is this dumb, dumb plan. Just to see what happens. Is he here? No, it looks like our friend. Oh, no, there he is. Hey, just so you know, in a few. Have I, seen it well? I just wanted to mention since we're getting along so well, in like a minute, everyone might turn to gold. I just wanted to just give you an advance warning of that. All right, there's Diana. Distinguished them. Put out, put, out, put out my own. I like high. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I guess I swapped them. Is that you, partner? Do you have the bow? Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Just go ahead and slide it under the door for me, and I'll unlock it for you. Why is the door locked? A little bit slow, aren't you? Yes, I locked you in. And until you give me my bow, you're going to stay in there, like Tantalus in Tartarus. Now, how is this not against the golden rule? You're going back on your promise. <laughs> no, technically, I never said that. I said, if we were to split all those riches between the two of us, infinite wealth is still infinite. It's hardly my fault if you can't tell the difference between a hypothetical and a promise now, is it? Oh, I do love a good loophole. Well, how can I trust you if you've double-crossed me like this? You're just going to have to take your chances, I'm afraid. The bow, now. And don't even think about giving me the fake one. I'll recognize my own handiwork. Well, I mean, even if I gave it to you, you'd probably just leave me in here. I would reconsider my position quickly if I were you. I'm not sure if you noticed, but you're stuck in there with a hornet's nest, and they can be rather aggressive toward intruders. You know, some say it takes 27 hornet stings to kill a man, but I always wondered how anyone could have known that. Let's find out if they were right, shall we? A giant golden hornet's nest. Does seem like a rash action by Decius. 
I mean, even if I was stuck in there and gonna die by hornets, couldn't I have just told him, hey, before I die, uh, I'll figure out some way to break the golden rule. Just for you, before I die. That just seems like a real risk on Decius's part. There's gotta be something I can do to anger the gods in here. Well, all right. The result of that was... What about the algae? What about it? Like, it's here. Yeah, it's here. Put my head down in it? I can see, like, the butterflies around the algae. Oh, right. I mean, it'd be silly to eat it. Why would I do that? So we have the gold bow. We can turn things to gold with it. What we what would we do with it? I mean, it's, we could kill people with the regular bow, so it's not like it's needed to kill people. Navy's journal. Galatea, I write this so that one day, when we're finally together, you will understand what I've done and why I had to do it. The others will call me mad or a monster, but I don't care what they think. Everything I'm doing here, I'm doing for you. I'll start at the beginning. Soon after my arrival here, as I walked down a corridor lined with golden statues, I thought I heard a whisper behind me, a rasp of air, as if vocal cords of metal strained to say a word or two. I tried to dismiss the idea, tried to concentrate on my work as the city's medic, but that tortured whisper haunted me. Weeks later, in the hallway to the bathhouse, I heard it again and found myself drawn to the statue of a Roman woman wearing a stola. Her face was contorted with anguish and fear, and disturbingly, it was as if she was looking right at me. As I walked past her, I heard that strained whisper again, and turning back, I discovered that even though I had moved, she was still looking right into my soul. That was when it dawned on me. This was no statue. This was a woman trapped within that golden prison. Naturally, I told the others, but when I could not reproduce the results of my experiment, they would not believe me. But from that moment on, I knew the full horror of this place. Immobilized within these statues are living human beings. It was that day, my love, that my heart broke. All right, well, that's what's bothering Navia. Space plus W. <laughs> Those ledges seem a little too high. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Can we... Don't know if we can make a running jump and grab those ledges. Don't know if that's how it works. Kind of a lengthy way down. It does seem like we're supposed to be going up. Okay, oh, we didn't need to grab. We could, we can 
the running jump is actually quite far, isn't it? When it said, if you don't like action or horror elements, you can skip this. It was like the horror elements was just, oh no, bugs. Like it didn't, I don't know, it didn't feel like that lasted long. The, the horror part of it. There we go. Right, and where are we coming out? Guess we can't open that. Find a way into the palace. Oh, okay. So these doors were locked from the outside. This is where the, um, the doctor locked herself in. At least now, at least now we know what to do for that guy in the sewer. The peeled statue is because she's removing the gold from the statues to try to turn them back to peoples. And apparently they don't appreciate that.
My beloved Galatea, after I learned the terrible truth about the golden statues, I wandered the city as if in a nightmare. What must life be like for these poor souls, entombed in gold, but kept alive somehow? Trapped in their own personal Tartarus, consigned to eternal torment, too horrific for any sane mind to comprehend. I tried to offer them what small mercies I could. I began to talk to them, to keep them company. I'd imagine backstories for them, give them names, and tell them of the world, of the histories and stories I'd learned as a child. I shipped them together. More concerned by my charity, I sought solitude. They did not appreciate my ships, and that is when I knew. I had to peel them. Discovering a way into the abandoned palace, I began to spend my days walking its halls and sharing with its occupants ancient tales, my mind turning to those of Apollo and Daphne, Perseus and Medusa, and Pygmalion and Galatea. Pygmalion, the sculptor who fell in love with a beautiful statue, and who, praying to Aphrodite for aid, discovered that his beloved Galatea had come to life. It was then that I heard you whisper to me, Galatea. Forgive me. I know that is not your real name, just one I have borrowed from a story. But when I turned to look at you, I saw the most exquisitely beautiful woman I have ever known. Your face forever frozen in a look of haunting sadness. Our meeting gave me new purpose to free you from your golden prison so that I might one day hear you speak, not just whisper your true name to me. So I gathered tools for the long and difficult task ahead, barred the doors to this place, and set to work. Well, it seems like as good a reason of any to start with the peeling. She peeled a lot of them so far. Like, she's been busy. Thank <laughs> you. 
I wonder how much function this bow and the gold turning to gold has outside of this. Whoops. Oh. I have to say, I wonder how much function it has outside of this, uh, this quest that we're doing here. I guess I have to turn the rest of it to gold. I didn't think that looked like you could walk on it. I don't think you can jump high enough from there. Mm -hmm. The bugs say here. Okay, I'm hanging on to the wall. Okay, okay, it's it's just we're walking on the wall because we're grabbing onto the the things. I got pummeled. Ah! 
beloved Galatea, my attempts at freeing these souls from their golden prisons have not been going to plan. My first charge was a Greek woman, who I called Iodami after the Athenian turned to stone by Medusa. Drilling through the gold that encased her, I was vindicated by the discovery that beneath half an inch of gold, which is so rigid it must be some kind of alloy, was living flesh. Unfortunately, this golden alloy seems to have fused with her skin, so removing it exposed the sinew and muscle beneath and appeared to cause her great pain. At first, I braced myself, expecting that inflicting such pain would break the golden rule, and yet, somehow, it did not. It seems whichever god is responsible for imprisoning these poor souls does not care about their suffering at all. They are forsaken. Undeterred, I pressed on, working late into the night, attempting to remove the golden layer that encased her as delicately as I could. Eventually, I was able to free most of her body, but when I released her from her restraints, her first act was to lunge for my throat, clawing at me with all her strength and those sharp metal talons. This was my thanks for trying to save her. Whatever possessed Iodami to attack, she was clearly not a suitable subject for my experiment, and I was forced to lock her inside an isolated wing of the palace and bar the door. As I continued working on others, I could hear her flailing and launching herself at the other side endlessly. Regrettably, my other experiments bore similar results, and after relocating a few times, most of the palace is now too dangerous to work in. Still, as much as my heart aches to know that you're suffering, I cannot risk attempting to ungild you yet. Not until I have perfected a method that will bring you back to me, whole in both mind and body, and ensure your humanity is preserved. I promise you this. One day we will be together, even if I have to free every last statue in this god's forsaken place. Get it right one of these times. It wasn't the first time or the second time or the 10th or the 20th, but at some point, get it right. We'll perfect, perfect the golden, the gold peeling experience. I guess stealing that statue's money doesn't count as stealing. Also something we learned from uh, that note. Is that apparently causing uh, immense pain is not a sin. I'm, uh, or at least, at least it's not for the statues. Is that the case with everyone? Is unclear at the moment. Me? 
Are you whispering to me through the statue somehow? I, I don't understand what you're saying. Ah. Hello. You must be Navia. And you must be the wretched snake who broke into my palace and disturbed my experiments. And worst of all, look at what you made me do to her. This never would have happened if you just stayed away. You're going to pay for that. Uh... Well, I good luck with that, I guess. You bring me down with your little wooden arrows before I jam this blade into your throat. Seems like we're both pretty determined to stay on our paths. It's not too late to walk away. Walk away? After everything you've done? This has nothing to do with me. Liar. I locked and barred the gate. I left a message warning you all to leave me alone. I just wanted to do my experiments in peace for her. And now look at her. You made me turn the most beautiful woman I've ever seen into this. Look at her. She's in agony. All I wanted was to spend my last moments with her. To see her beautiful face. To hear her speak freely instead of in those cryptic whispers. But as soon as I began my work, she stopped whispering to me. And now I discover she started whispering to you instead. What's so special about you? It's not this statue whispering to me. A lot of them do it. The same voice, though. What do you mean, the same voice? It's like someone else is whispering to me through the statues. Hmm. Yes. I remember when they used to whisper to me. They did sound similar. I just thought it was because all voices sound the same when they whisper. But now that I think about it, they were all benevolent and seemed to share a common knowledge. But if these bodies are mere conduits for that one voice, then this body is nobody. And everything I've done here was... was... Wait, I see what you're doing. You're trying to steal her away from me. Were you planning to wait until I'd done all the hard work, then swoop in? Is that it? Uh, no, no, of course no. Not the what? Me? No. Liar. You tried to steal her away from me, and now look what you made me do. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't peel you, too. Look, I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm just trying to leave. What? What are you talking about? I got trapped in the tunnels under the city, and they came up inside the palace. Wait. So you're saying you weren't coming for us? I never had any intention of hurting you. I just wanted to steal a god's bow. So I did all this. I ruined her. For nothing. What have I done? Oh god, I feel sick. I am... I can't bear the thought of her being like this. And in so much pain. It's the air. Coming into contact with her flesh. It's agonizing for them. But the only way to fix it would be to break the golden rule and let it run its course. At least that way she'd be golden again and we'd be together. All it would take is one little cut. Right, I can undo all this, but I do need to know the treatment for rheumatism so I can do another side quest. It's unrelated to this one, but maybe you can help me out with it. It's too late. There's nothing you can do. I have to do this. I'm sorry. I can cover her in gold again if you'd like. What? How? This, I have this badass golden bow. Put cases people in gold. Really? I, I'm not sure I believe you. But if you can undo this mess, I'll tell you what you need to know. 
But if you're lying to me, I'll break the golden rule and kill you and everyone else in this city. Understood? All right. It's not like I haven't done it myself. There. You did it. You took away her pain. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you. I swear I will never harm her again. I swear it. I'll stay here to keep her company. But these poor souls, what can be done for them? I've tried everything I can. I fear the only one capable of releasing them properly is whichever god doomed them in the first place. In any case, I must honor our bargain. The treatment for rheumatism is willow bark. I believe there's a pot of it already in the Shrine of Apollo. Now, please leave. The door here leads out onto the palace balcony. You should be able to make your way down from there. What can I do? I've tried everything. I tried peeling their skin off, and I tried peeling their skin off, and then I kept trying doing to do that, and nothing. This one thing doesn't seem to be working, but I keep trying it. Goodbye, Navia. And never return. Sure. Wow, really did a number on her. Like, what's the, what's going on in the midsection there? And we get to use our zip line to cap it off. Ooh, yeah. Ove. Did you see that? It's totally badass. Okay. So we okay. So it said that we didn't have to do that whole thing if we don't like action and horror. But we did, we got like the side quest where we had to shoot a whole bunch of people and turn them into gold. And I guess at the very least, we, we know what to do for the guy in the sewer if it gives us the option to use the bow and arrow against him. I don't know if that'll do anything for us. Um, maybe that would help us talk to that one guard who doesn't want to go into the sewers because of that guy. Possibly, but as far as I can tell, so as far as I can tell, the big reward for doing this side quest that we've been doing has we've gotten the cure for rheumatism. So now we can help that one guy who has the rheumatism. Uh, he will be, he will be so relieved to get some pain relief. Uh, from his rheumatism, because we now know how to cure it. Um, but, you know, I, I, I was approaching uh, that one guy with the intention of killing him, executing him, and seeing what would happen. I mean, I'm sure that we would just break the golden rule and we'd have to escape again. But, uh, you know, then we got the offer to, to, to swap the bows and it seemed real dumb yet somehow it didn't break the golden rule and we ended up getting into this whole side thing about the doctor deciding she has to skin all the golden statues because it's the only way it's the only way <laughs> there's nothing else that can be done but but to skin them um so now we discovered the truth behind the guy in the sewers and why he's like that and also the truth behind curing rheumatism. And also we're going to have to figure out what to do because about concerning that the guy with the rheumatism is also the guy who's harassing. Um, man, I can't remember anyone's names. I haven't been referring to anyone by their names because honestly, I can't remember anyone's names. Um, so we're going to have to do something with that. And, uh, are we any cl Oh, also, we figured out how to get rid of the assassin. So at least there's that. Figured out how to get rid of the assassin and stop that one woman from, 
dying in the little temple. Um, so, like, you know, little things. Little things. And uh, are we actually any... Oh, we found that one guy who lives underground, and he's like, I want to debate someone philosophically. Do you know the name of the god who is behind the golden rule? We don't know. We don't know who that one guy is. We don't know who he is or what information he may have for us. He seems important, though. He seems like he's probably important. And... But are we actually any closer to discovering the mystery, the riddle behind the Forgotten City? Not really? Not really so far. Not really. Um, I guess we'll continue on. Eventually we're going to break that golden rule. But, you know, any knowledge that we have when we uh when we break it we'll carry over into the next time loop and i also assume the items i actually didn't check our inventory but i assume that any items that we take with us through the the time loop i assume we would still have so maybe we get to keep this golden bow permanently but what does that do for us um, i guess we'll find out as we continue with the forgotten city